Okay, today I'm going to uh, try to get through this final here, uh, parts one and two. Uh, the create, first I'm going to do creating of the database here. And I'm going to uh, take advantage of my hints link here and I um, basically describe what I have to do to uh, get started. And, uh, and then it, the, the create a database is just three steps here. That's what I'll be doing. So if I um, open up my Visual Studio, it looks like this, and I will uh, create a new project. And I want to create a Windows Form application. And I think I'll name it uh, I don't know, Final 5. Okay. And it finally comes up. <clears throat> um, we're going to um, create the database first, though. So uh, I don't need the toolbox right now. I'll use that later. Uh, so to create a database, I go to the Solution Explorer. And I uh, right-click on the project here, the C-sharp project. Right-click, and I'm going to add a new item. And I'm going to add a service-based database. And uh, database one mdf is a fine name for it. This takes a little while. <clears throat> we see it here. And let's click on it and uh, go over to Server Explorer. By the way, if you don't see any of the tabs here, you can always go to View, and they are listed here. Server Explorer is listed right here. You may actually have to go to other windows, and it may be over here, but you can always find it here. So Server Explorer, and it's this is the database I just created. So I'm going to open it, and it should connect up. We should see the red X go away there. It turns into a green plug. And we can look at the tables. There are no tables. See, there are no tables. And so we're going to create our first table. Uh, so we're going to go click on it and go right click and do add new table. And we get the screen for creating a new table. Now, if I'll, I'm just going to take a peek here while that's loading. Uh, we're going to create, first table we're going to create is going to be this one. And uh, it's going to, uh, we're going to have an ID field first. And then we can have these fields. And then we're going to split the address field up into 60 North Veritania Street, 2704. So basically it's going to be four fields because we want to keep track of each one of these separately. And that's used for sorting. Uh, then the city, state, and zip. So let's see if it's opened yet. Uh, here we are. This is our first table. Now the first table we're going to call uh, customers, I guess. So let's go back here and right here where it says table, we replace that word table with customers. And then we can just go ahead and start adding our fields. So we're going to add a customer ID. And oh, by the way, this one has got to be uh, the int is fine. It's got to be a, um, I'm going to press enter here, click on it again. I got to look at the properties. Oops. So go over here and find properties. And we're on customer ID. And basically, for identity specification, to make this an auto incrementing field when you add new fields click here and change the false to true and the default is if it starts out at one that's the seed 
and each time you add a new record, it increments by one. Okay, uh, the next field, if we recall, is the first name, something like that, and uh, um, n bar char 50 is fine. Uh, n bar char uh, is able to store a broader range of, of different character formats rather than just ASCII. And we need a last name field. And I like n bar char 50 again. And then for the address field, we're going to have a street number. And if you recall, I ask you to make that one 12 characters. So I'm going to make that a n bar char. Now I have to actually enter it in 12. And I want a street direction. Now this is just north, south, east, west, and so on. So n bar char uh, 2 is fine for that. Let's make it 10. And uh, street number, street name, I mean. N bar char 50 is fine. Uh, apartment. N bar char, we don't know how to uh, indicate these apartments, so let's just leave it there. And we need a city. And a state. Presumably only two. And a zip. Ten is the biggest that would be. Okay, so this is our our um, customers table, and uh, so to actually create this, we need to click this update button here, and that actually prepares a script to create the table. And once that's done, we should see this update database button here, and we can click update database and now it actually executes so when we look at the server explorer we need to refresh this I just need to refresh and now we see the customers table with all the fields so uh, while we're at it why don't we add a couple fields uh, add a couple records just so you can see how that works I right click on customers and I show data table and I can put this pin here to actually I don't need it. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna add uh who are some what are some names here? I'm gonna add Bert Kobayashi at thirty three twenty five Moana Lua Avenue. Let me see. I'm gonna add Carl Rhodes twenty seven oh one first. I'm not gonna populate the whole database here, but first let's add Carl. Uh yeah, he was at sixty. Now uh Remember, I want you to write justify left pad all the house numbers with spaces. So uh, basically, what I'm asking you to do is for Carl, for example, his uh, street address number is 60. So I need to put 10 spaces before the 60 to make sure that uh, it, it is right, just, uh, right justified. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that is, um, he lives on North Baratania 2704. So, North Baratania Street 2704. And that is in Honolulu, Hawaii. And his zip is 96816. Okay, and then uh, you need to add your address. Oops. 
uh, I'm uh, uh, 1180, so 1180, nothing, Mokuhano, street, nothing, Five, and you should add your own. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, you want to add the remaining records here, but I won't do that right now. Anyway, so um, when we're done, uh, just click on the new line and you can see. Now, you notice that we did, we never added anything in customer ID because it populated that field for us. Okay, we can refresh this just to confirm to ourselves that it's in there. And let's um, go back to Server Explorer and add... Um, Two more tables. So uh, close this. Uh, right click on tables, add new table, and we need to add. This is going to be the cashiers, and the first one is going to be a cashier ID, and that again is going to be. Let's look at the properties, and let's make that true. For identity specification, default is fine, uh, and then we're going to add a first name, and that can be a uh, Barch and Barchar fifty, and we're going to add a last name, and this is N Barchar fifty, and that's good for that. So uh, we click update and update database. And we can look uh, to see that um, we refresh, and we see the customer uh, cashier's table is now there. So let's go go there and uh, right click on Show Data Table, and let's add a couple of people here. We had Kim Pine, uh, Joey. And add yourself. Okay. So uh, we can refresh that just to confirm that it's all there. And we need to make one more table. And it is the um, transactions table. So uh, this time we're going to speak transactions. And up here, we're going to make a transaction ID. And again, properties, identity specification, true. And then we're going to have a, um, <clears throat> a cashier ID. I'm just going to consistently do that. This is going to be an int. And then we need a uh, customer ID. Int and then we need a um, transaction date and that's going to be a date, date time and finally we need a transaction code and we're just going to make that an integer because of how it's defined. Okay, that's fine. Uh, our our uh, Transactions database and I update, update database. And now when we look at our server explorer, we have, let's refresh this, refresh this, and we have three tables. Now, uh, you notice I did not ask you to actually go ahead and relate these tables. That is, make cashier ID connect to the cashier ID here and make the customer ID connect to the customer ID here. Um, the way to do that is um, is by uh, adding foreign keys, and there you actually just add the statements down below here in the create table that define the foreign keys. It turns out that that defining the foreign foreign key, uh, actually defining the foreign keys, uh, is is very helpful for debug purposes to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Uh, it's good for testing because you find out 
if you uh, are failing to delete keys when you need to or you are accidentally uh, deleting records when you should not be. But once you have all of your code debugged, uh, you can remove those um, those constraints because they only take up execution time while the uh, while your 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 program is running or while your 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 database is executing. And uh, so for performance reasons, uh, you would actually remove those when the site uh, uh, went live and you're sure that everything works. So I'm not going to bother putting those those connections in, and uh, this database is fine right now, and uh, so that's where I'll leave it.